Here's your notes podcast on measuring mass and volume. You can put these notes just as a continuation of your notes on measurement from class. Maybe draw a line just to show that it's a new section. So first we're going to go over how to measure volume. Just a reminder, volume is the amount of space that an object or a substance takes up. Look back at your measurement notes to see if you have this definition there. And if you don't, you should put it here now. Otherwise, maybe just put a star or something next to it. Now here are the units we use for volume. We use the cubic centimeter, and you can see how that's written, uh, centimeters cubed with a little exponent. We use that for solids, liquids, or gases, um, mostly for solids. And then we can also use the liter or the milliliter for liquids or gases only. So the volume of a solid should never be um, expressed in liters or milliliters. You'll notice that I use the capital L for liter. Um, and the reason I did that is just because a lowercase l sometimes looks like the number one. Um, so it's totally correct to use a lowercase l or an uppercase l for the l in liter or milliliter. Now, we can convert between these units really, really easily um, because a milliliter and a centimeter cubed are exactly the same size. Um, so that allows us to go back and forth between the units very, very easily. So first off, here's how you get the volume of a liquid. And just a reminder, you should use a graduated cylinder like the one that's pictured. And when you use it, you should get at eye level with the cylinder. And I saw some of you guys doing this when you did our liquid layers challenge. Then you're going to read the bottom of the liquid curve. That curve is called the meniscus. Okay. Um, and when you look at the bottom, that's where you're going to find your reading. Don't forget to estimate for your last digit. So let's practice here. Take a look at this zoom in of this graduated cylinder. I want you to figure out what the volume of the liquid is. Okay, I got 43.0. Now, why is it 43.0 and not just 43? It's because the lines go to the nearest one milliliter. And I think it's right on the line. So my estimated digit goes to the 10th and it's going to be zero. So 43.0 milliliters. Okay, so then how do we get our volume of a solid? If it's a rectangular shape, then we can do length times width times height equals volume. And if it's an irregular shape, then we would use the water displacement method. I'm going to go through that on the next slide. So for water displacement method, first you put some water in a graduated cylinder and you record the starting volume. Then you're going to carefully add your object to the graduated cylinder, and that's going to make the water level go up. You record the new volume, and then you subtract the first reading, which is the smaller number, from the second reading, which is the larger number, and the difference is the object's volume. So when that object goes in the graduated cylinder, the amount that it pushes the water up is going to be its volume. You express your answer in centimeters cubed because it's a solid you're measuring. But the graduated cylinders markings are in milliliters. But that's okay because a milliliter and a centimeter cubed are exactly the same size. So whatever number you read in milliliters, use the same number and just change the units to centimeters cubed. So that's how you find the volume of an object. The other thing we often measure is the mass of an object. A reminder of what mass is, it's the amount of matter in an object. So how much stuff is there in that object? You can almost think of it as like, 
how many atoms or how many particles do we have in there? Take a look back at your measurement notes to see if you have um, a definition for mass in there. And if you do, you can just star it. Otherwise, please copy it now. Now we measure mass using one of three tools, the equal arm balance, the triple beam balance, or the electronic balance. And I'm going to show you what each one looks like and how to use it. So this one here is called the equal arm balance. We won't be using it in this class, um, but it's important for you to know what it looks like just in case you're ever asked, what do I measure with this thing? The way you use it is you put an object of known mass on this side, and then you'll put your unknown object on this side, and you keep on changing your, un your known masses until it balances evenly. Once they balance evenly, you can add up all your known masses here, and you know what the mass is. The triple beam balance might be a little more familiar to you. You might have used it in sixth grade. So here you put your object on the pan of the balance, and then you move the sliders until it balances perfectly. And when it does, you read the sliders, and it tells you the mass. We are also not going to be using the triple beam balance in this class this year but it's important that you know it's for mass just in case you're ever asked. What will we be using this year? We're going to use the electronic balance because it's easiest and quickest. So the way to use it is you make sure the pan is clean and empty, and then you're going to zero set the balance. And the way you do that is by pushing the on off zero button here. Sometimes it's its own button, and sometimes it's the same as the on and off button. Once your scale reads 0, 0.00, then you're going to put your object on the pan, and you'll wait for the reading to stabilize. So wait until it stops changing, and then once it does, you can read your mass. One quick thing I want to point out, to what place does the measurement go on this balance? It's going to be the same place that our balances we use in the class go. The other question I have for you is, can you see what the units are for mass that it's using? OK, so for the first question, the place, here is the point. That's the tenths, that's the hundredths. So this scale can measure to the hundredth of a gram. And that's the answer to the second question. The units for mass are grams. If you don't have written down that the units for mass are grams, please add that. G is for gram. And other common units are kilogram, which is kg, or milligram, which is mg. All right, so there's an overview of how to measure volume and mass. Let's just do a quick check for understanding. How would I measure the mass and the volume of each of these objects? So here on the left, I've got a piece of my favorite stone, my favorite mineral, which is called Labradorite. Isn't it so pretty? And then here on the right, I've got an aluminum bar. So I'd like you to pause and figure out how to measure the mass and the volume of each of these. And then when you're ready, press play, and you can see if you have it right. OK, so first off, for the Labradorite, um, you, since it's in a regular shape, oh, sorry, my dog is barking at the mailman. Penny, quit it. Um, so for the Labradorite, it's a, um, an irregular shape. So to get the volume, you would use the water displacement method. You'd put some water in a graduated cylinder, record the volume. Then you'd put in the Labradorite, a stone, and see how much the water raised by. And for the mass, you would use the electronic balance. For the aluminum bar, you would use the electronic balance for the mass, so the mass is done the same way. But because the aluminum bar is a regular shape, it's this nice rectangle here, 
you could do length times width times height to get the volume. So for this one, you would do length times width times height. And for this one, you would do water displacement. All right, so tomorrow we're going to be practicing doing each of these types of measurements in class. Um, have a good night, and I'll see you then.